Thursday, March 21st, 1991. A man led police on a high-speed chase in Louisiana going into Mississippi. What the police didn't know at the time was the man that they were chasing was Dennis DePew, a man who had been recently featured on America's Most Wanted for killing his wife in Michigan and fleeing the state. His case was also the inspiration behind the 2001 horror movie, Jeepers Creepers. Dennis had been married to Marilyn DePew for 18 years. They were a normal family, both had good careers. He was a property assessor and she was a high school counselor. Marilyn claims that after the children were born, he became distant. And he said that she turned the kids against him. Marilyn wanted to raise the family on her own. So in 1989, they divorced. And Marilyn was left with the custody of her three children but Dennis was given permission to make bi-weekly visits. Although Marilyn and her children were reluctant to spend time with Dennis. There was a time when Marilyn changed the locks because she didn't want Dennis having access to the main house. So one day she came home and Dennis was sitting on the couch in her house. After that, it happened a few more times. She never knew how he got in. But one day, Dennis randomly mentioned to a coworker that he was thinking about killing himself and someone else, but he didn't say who he was thinking about killing. So on April 15th, 1990, Dennis went to Marilyn's house to pick up two of their children. However, the children had refused to go with him, which made him quite angry. When Marilyn tried to talk to him, he started yelling at her. He grabbed her and threw her down the stairs. After that, Marilyn was knocked unconscious. So Dennis grabbed her and told the children that he would take her to the hospital. The oldest daughter, Jennifer, ran to the neighbor's house to call the police. Dennis and Marilyn never made it to the hospital. Later on, Ray and Marie Thornton were on the road when a high-speed truck passed them. On the road, Ray and Marie always played a game with pronouncing license plate numbers. They noticed the license plate started with G, Z. So they said, geez, he must be in a hurry but they didn't pay much attention until a few minutes later when they passed an abandoned school and saw the van was parked there. And as they were driving past, they saw the man behind the school with a bloody white shirt. A few minutes later, they saw that same van was following them. So Ray turned into another road and the van stopped on the side of the road. Then they turned to see if they could see the full license plate so they could write it down for the police and they saw the guy was changing his license plate. He also had the passenger door open, but the passenger door was covered in blood. After that, they returned to the abandoned school and found a bloody blanket and shirt. After that, they called the police. After the police arrived, they found fresh tire tracks and pools of blood. The tracks matched his van and it was discovered that the van belonged to Dennis and that he had murdered Marilyn, shooting her in the head and hiding her body just off the road between her home in that abandoned school where he was seen. So Dennis fled. Though later, Dennis would start writing letters. He wrote 17 of them to his friends and family in an attempt to justify her death. The letters were postmarked in Virginia, Iowa, and Oklahoma. One letter in specific said, Marilyn had many opportunities to treat me fairly during this divorce. She chose to string it out, trick me, lie to me, when you lose your wife, children, and home, there's not much left. And I was too old to start over. That was the last that anybody heard from Dennis. But on March 21st, 1991, Dennis had already changed his name to Hank Queen and was watching the show Unsolved Mysteries and noticed that he was featured on the show. As he was watching the show, he began to gather some of his belongings and packing his clothes so that he could leave. When doing so, his girlfriend Mary got home from work and she walked in. As she walked in, he asked her to make him a sandwich for the road. 
so he kept her in the kitchen while he continued to watch the show and continued to pack his belongings. His girlfriend said that he left in a hurry and told her that he had to visit his mother who was sick. Later, a friend of Mary's gave the license plate number of Dennis's van to the police because she saw Dennis on Unsolved Mysteries. After a few hours, Dennis was found to be in Louisiana crossing the border into Mississippi, prompting the police to start a chase. As the police pursued Dennis, they shot out his back tires. Dennis then stopped the van, shot at the police, then finally turning the gun on himself. After that, nothing came of what happened. This was the true story behind the movie Jeepers Creepers. Uh -huh.